Hello YouTube, this is Quinn, that snazzy iPhone guy, and this is the video review of the Segway X2 personal transport system. Now Segway was founded in the early 90s and has since been purchased by GM, but this is one of the more quirky ways to get around town. Segway really made its debut in 2002 at the Winter Olympics, actually in my hometown, Salt Lake City, and then the marketing and advertising and hearsay kind of died back down in 2004 to 2005. Now the X2 is their off-road model, which retails for a whopping $6,435. We bid on it as a family as a joke, and we actually ended up winning the auction. Luckily, we only paid two grand for it. As you can see, it's pretty cosmetically beat up, but it still works and functions like a champ, and this is the video review of the Segway X2. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now, Segway kind of advertises their device as a plug and play, anyone can kind of do it the first time situation. And as a matter of fact, this isn't actually true. Most people spend 20 to 30 minutes kind of figuring it out. And it's not because it's weird, it's not because it's bizarre, but it's because it actually adapts to what we do naturally. And as humans, we're very wary of this. We're very used to having to adapt to the product, not having it adapt to us. Now steering, as you can see, is very basic. Left and right is probably the most simple. There's the sway bar, and you tilt that horizontally, and that will determine whether or not you uh, turn. If you're staying in the same spot, one wheel turns in opposite direction of the other, and if you're moving, one wheel will move faster than the other in order to create the turn. Now, forwards and backwards is a little bit more intuitive. What it does is it takes the weight of your feet and the distribution of your weight on the pads on the deck, and it determines whether or not you're leaning frontwards or backwards. And this will allow you and at what intensity to control the device. Now, as you can see here, we have a ladder that's about three inches off the ground, and the Segway will take it fast or slow, absolutely no problems. So the X2 scales terrain awesomely. Now, the i2 will not be capable of this, and this is where the X2 does come in handy. Again, we're scaling a letter, uh, a letter, a ladder, and the left wheel is about five to six inches higher than the left wheel, but it's not a problem. Now right here is one of the coolest features of the Segway. The counterbalance inside the Segway allow the Segway to stop while you're not on it. It stays in place and the weights keep it afloat even though it only has two wheels. Now I can't even tell you how many times I've been asked, well, how and why do you not fall off of the Segway? And this is because there are counterweights inside of the device that slide back and forth to, like I said, counteract the weight that you're putting when you balance. So when you lean backwards, those counterweights slide forward and the Segway is able to detect which way you are moving, but also hold you in place so that when you are leaning back, you don't fall backwards. So this is a very intuitive process. When you have seen and when you do see YouTube videos of people eating it on a Segway, it's because they too rapidly transition from forwards to backwards and the counterweights don't have enough time to slide back and forth, thusly resulting in all the weight on one side, causing the Segway to tip. It's very hard to do, and I think unless you actually try to do it, uh, you're not going to have much of a problem tipping over. Now, as you may have heard, inside of the feet pads are vibrating motors, and this lets you know when you're doing something a little bit too crazy for the Segway to handle. When you're going too fast, when you're going... Uh, which is in excess of 12.5 miles an hour, when you're leaning or spinning too rapidly, it'll let you know you're kind of on the edge. And it won't stop you until you start to do something really dangerous, such as tip the Segway or make it off the ground or lose contact with one of your feet. And that's when the Segway will do an auto shut off. But until that point, it just kind of lets you know, you know, maybe you should be driving the Segway a little bit more safely. Now, as demonstrated here, and it doesn't look like it, but it's actually a very steep hill. It's steep enough that we can't use a riding lawnmower on it's simply too steep it tips over yet you can see the Segway handles it without much trouble it does have a little bit of trouble coming down but it doesn't at all stutter I mean it maybe slows down a little or maybe you know it has a, a little bit of rundown but it doesn't ever physically stop and that's something that's pretty impressive about the Segway is it truly is really versatile you can take it off jumps ledges steep terrains and you're still good Though the Segway X2 is advertised as an off-road device, it can certainly compete with other transportation devices on road. As I stated earlier, it has a top speed of 12 and a half miles an hour, which doesn't sound like much, but when you're actually on the Segway going that fast, 
it's pretty speedy. It also doesn't take up too much room, so when you're driving from place to place, shop to shop, it's not that much of a burden to be able to store it. Now it uses an info key, which is an RFID key, which allows you to do a bunch of different things. You can diagnose errors. It has a speedometer, it has an odometer, so you can see how many miles in your trip. You can see battery life information. As I stated earlier, you can see errors. You can also turn the key on and off. And uh, your Segway will only work with that specific RFID key. So they are specific to each one, so Segways don't interfere. There's also a turtle mode, so if you have a little kitty, you can change the speed down where it maxes out. Battery performance has been superb for me. It's been absolutely excellent and a range has gone all day. I live in a city where lots are really big and homes are spread out in pretty long distances. So this is more of a toy and a novelty than anything else. It's not utilized as a real transportation tool. However, if you're in the streets of Manhattan, Chicago or other places where a lot of things are really close together and cars aren't a viable option. I can definitely see this as a transportation utility. The only issue comes into play when we talk about the price. Six grand is a lot of money for something like this and unless you can buy one used for two to three, I can't really recommend it. It's a lot of fun, they're really cool to ride, people are hugely envious of them, but as a physical transporter, at that price I just don't see it as a viable product.